Firstly, it should be noted that the POD Toro's images are primarily based on the logos associated with what I believe to be likely the oldest form of such a concept, associating the letters of the Hebrew alphabet with the Egyptian hieroglyphics equivalent to their shared original Phoenician ideograms. Hence, the hieroglyphic of the ox horns, parallel to the Phoenician A, was equivalent to the Hebrew letter Aleph. Just so, the corresponding image in the POD Tarot Trump cards prominently features an ox, and so on. In this lecture, I will be going through these images one by one, but it should also be noted that their order overall is arbitrary. It is a contrived invention that B should follow A, and, in fact, after only three intervals, already our modern Etruscan alphabet begins to disagree with the Phoenician-based modern Hebrew alphabet, as we find C follows B in modern English, but that G, Gimel, follows B, Beth, in Hebrew. Even this order for the letters into the modern Hebrew alphabet was disagreed on initially, and the first understood format for their arrangement in relationship to one another was as a circle of 22 variables, seven able to move independently throughout the system of the remaining 15. This format came to be called the 231 Gates of Binah, because 231 lines connect each of the 22 letter variables to every other. Such was the original Tarot. In modern Tarot, each card's image tells a part of a story, and reassembling the right proper order for these events to tell the correct version of the story is considered part of the great work required of any modern occult philosopher. Of course, as stated, only a spread of three concentric circles, the outer one of the twelve zodiac signs, the middle of the seven planets, and the innermost of the three elements. Arranged according to the astrological positions of the planets relative to the zodiac, is proper for understanding this model. However, various arrangements may be laid out linearly, and all are equally valid as possible options. Again, insofar as each card represents its own unique tableau, their order relative to one another is ultimately arbitrary. I have done my best to order them in what I consider to be a logical method here, although it should also be noted, my arrangement differs from the modern Hebrew alphabetic arrangement more commonly used today. Firstly is the ox of Aleph. Hebrew for the much later Etruscan letter A that is used in English today. The variable associated with it in the system of circles is the element air, or more accurately, the alchemical element sulfur. So we can see that in the POD artistic depiction for this tarot trump, a man sits in the middle of a mountain pass with his arms raised in the grand hailing sign of distress. He sits protecting a dead cat behind him and looking down the nostrils of his ox stampeding right at him. Behind the ox is an avalanche that has destroyed the man's cart and set the ox on its blind charge. In the sky overhead are the stars of Orion, the archer, taking aim at the horns of the constellation Taurus.
the bowl. The second card is the House of Beth, Hebrew for Etruscan letter B. In this arrangement, we see the Hebrew Beth and its correspondent Egyptian hieroglyphic of a house are not the only attributes assigned to this card either. It is also given to the moon sign among the seven planetary ring, as well as to the Greek vowel alpha and the gematria sum two. These traits given in the surrounding frame around the image for each card add some elements of additional meaning to each card's artistic image, but do not need to be known and understood for each card to comprehend their intended concept. Likewise, the Mayan Cold House and the Sumerian Anunnaki Nana are names on this card as well, but that add little of value to its overall interpretation. The final term, Papus, written across the top, gives the name of the tarot trump that is most commonly associated with the Hebrew letter and Egyptian hieroglyphic pair. These three elements, the tarot trump's name across the top of the frame, the Hebrew letter in the upper right corner, and the Egyptian hieroglyphic depicted in the center frame and explained across the bottom of the frame, make up the majority of the meaning of the images in the POD tarot. So, in the Papus, or Pope Joan card of the P.O.D. Tarot, we find the Empress of modern Tarot depicted wearing a long cloth mask marked by a red cross, concealing her face, and an Egyptian hood topped with the crescent diadem of Babylonian Ishtar, called in Egyptian Isis. She sits with her upper torso exposed and legs parted wide with a board in her lap on which are the twin cubes of the Kabbalah, both separated and conjoined. She wears an apron over her thighs that conceals her genitals as she fills a holy goblet with abominations and the stuff of her fornications, as prophesied in Revelation 17. At her feet are a cornucopia of fruits and another of grains and we see an apple and an orange spilling over the top step of the three-tiered platform she sits upon. Behind her are the pillars of Jachin in silver and Boaz in gold, with a lattice symbolizing the Kabbalah between them. On either side of her in the foreground, Two hands draw back the veil of her brick hut, revealing her thusly denuded. In her left hand, she holds a hookah stem. The third trump card in the P.O.D. Tarot deck is the camel hieroglyphic, symbolized by the letter Gimel in Hebrew equivalent to modern English G. It is associated with the planet Mars, the Greek letter Omicron, a gematria value of three, with Mayan Razor House, and with the Sumerian Anunnaki Nergal. Its meaning as a tarot trump is the lightning-struck tower. The motif of a citadel in flames 
has been used as a symbol for the destruction of the Tower of Babel and the prophesied fall of Babylon, according to the Christian Book of Revelation, at least since Michel Nostradamus, 1503 until 1566 A.D., included it in his Vaticania Nostradamus, published posthumously in 1629. In the POD depiction, we see a single parapet of stone and mortar, three stories in height, with a watchtower, crow's nest, in the roof. At the top of this citadel are a prince in black, holding in his left hand a skull, and a king in crimson, holding his ear and warding away the skull. With his right hand, the prince is flying a Chinese dragon windsock kite with a metal key suspended from the string tethering it down. Above the king is the upside-down constellation of the Big Dipper, and above the prince, the North Star, Polaris. In the distant background, on a mountaintop, we see a Tesla tower generating a bolt of lightning that is striking the key on the prince's kite string. In the foreground, a natural lightning bolt strikes a grounded lightning rod, frightening a horse and confusing a camel drinking from a nearby oasis. The fourth card is the World Tarot Trump, associated with Hebrew Daleth, English D, and with the hieroglyphic of a hinge, symbolic of a gateway, threshold, portal, or door. This card relates to the planet Saturn, Greek vowel Omega, and has a gematria value of four. It is associated with the Mayan crossroads and with the Sumerian Anunnaki, Enlil. In the POD depiction of this ideogram, we see the Earth surrounded by a vast hypercube, measuring the distance between the planet's surface and the outer ionosphere of its electromagnetic field. In each corner of the piece, we find a representation of one of the four elements. Water in the upper left, air in the upper right, fire in the lower right, and earth as a door slamming shut in the lower left. Here we see the ripples of water measure a second dimensional sinusoidal wavelength and that the currents of wind in the air measure a three-dimensional combination of two such wavelengths. Likewise, fire radiates outward in all directions, and earth, symbolized as the closing door, radiates inward from all directions toward a central core point. The fifth tarot trump card in this arrangement is the Hebrew letter He for H, associated with the image of a window, in this case depicted by a hieroglyph of an eye, specifically the right eye of Horus Ra. The gematria of five, the zodiac sign of Aries, the ram, and the title of king are also associated with this card. Thus, in the POD rendition of these attributes, we see a crowned man, his face obscured by a long purple cloth mask, in a red robe with a fur collar, 
holding aloft a scimitar in his left hand and weighing out in balance with his right hand over a tethered ram placed onto a sacrificial altar. Behind the figure is a window and outside the window is a total solar eclipse. The sixth Toro Trump in the POD system of reckoning their order relates the Hebrew letter Vav, English V, to the Egyptian hieroglyph of a nail, to the zodiac sign Taurus, the bull, to the gematria value 6, and to the role of the Pope in the context of the deck. In the POD's depiction of these traits, we see a bull-headed person wearing a blindfold and keys for earrings, holding an onk staff, surrounded by a slithering snake in his left hand, while with his right hand, welcoming the onlooker into his parted robes where a tunnel appears to open up to some far-off distant mountain. Behind him is a solar eclipse and the silver river of the Milky Way, as well as twin step pyramids, and he stands on a blood-red mat outside a doorway level with the pyramid's capstone tops. The seventh Tarot Trump card symbolizes Zayin in Hebrew, a sword hieroglyphic depicted as a vizier's staff here, the zodiac sign Gemini, the twins, and the role of love among the Trump cards. Just so, its depiction among the POD Trump cards shows two figures standing opposite one another, both clad in Egyptian kilts, the one on the right wearing a Mars logo and standing before an apple, and the one on the left, a logo of Venus, and standing over an orange. Behind them, a tree rises up from a stepped pillar, and between them, a massive hooded cobra snake rises up with its forked tongue extended and caught between the tips of two swords held by the two twin figures. The eighth tarot trump is symbolic of the Egyptian hieroglyphic depicting a fence. It is equivalent to the later Hebrew letter Cheth, the zodiac sign Cancer, the crab, and the chariot card among the usual tarot trumps. Here I substitute the title Ship for it. The tableau depicted in the POD imagery for this tarot trump card shows a scene from the ancient Epic of Gilgamesh in which one of the Sumerian pantheon of gods called the Anunnaki warns Utnapishtim, king of Shurapak and the Sumerian predecessor of the biblical character of Noah of the coming of the great flood by whispering the message through the king's reed fence. In the image, we see a masked charioteer wearing a twin snake crown of the sun, guiding a wheels within wheels like vehicle via reins attached to seven sphinx like lions on the front wheel of it. Behind the seated figure, we see the fence glyph, and behind the fence, the rising waters of the deluge and a cubic ship 
atop the palace ziggurat, and behind this, twin mountains and a solar eclipse. The ninth Turo trump is assigned to the Hebrew letter Teth, English T, and as such to the Egyptian hieroglyphic for a serpent, or viper, from whose magical image the shape of the Hebrew letter and that of the Egyptian hieroglyph supposedly both evolved. This card associates the letter and number with the zodiac sign of Leo, the lion, and to the tarot trump called variously strength in the rider weight deck or lust in the Crowley Harris rendition that I have called here simply sex to symbolize the process of generation of the species. As such, the imagery of the P.O.D. Tarot trump card associated with this letter and number pair shows a lioness upstream from her three cubs who are playing with a shed snakeskin, preparing to defend them against a rearing hooded cobra upstream from them both who, in turn, is defending its nest of newly hatching serpents. Above them, a phoenix carries away one of the snakes to feed its carcass to its own nest of screaming young atop an acacia tree in the distant background. The tenth tarot trump card in the P.O.D. deck is based on the Hebrew letter Yod, the English Y, or I, which has as its magical image a hieroglyphic of a hand, corresponding to the usual Turo Trump role of the hermit, here labeled simply as alone. This card is also associated with the zodiac sign of Virgo, the Virgin, and usually depicts King Solomon, deceased, leaning on his staff and holding a lantern aloft. The P.O.D.'s depiction shows a hermit beneath the center of five standing stone menhirs, or hewn and upright raised megaliths, resting his walking staff and sitting, cross-legged, lighting a pipe at a crossroads, across which from him grow a circle of mushrooms around a circular fountain or well. In the skies above, we see a lightning strike, the Milky Way, and a total solar eclipse haloing a bust of Hermes, for whom such mile marker stones, called Herms, were named, crowned with a laurel of leaves. The eleventh tarot trump card is the first to have a different gematria sum from its sequential order among the letters or whatever other variables listed. Because it is the eleventh such variable listed, its gematria leaps up by a factor of ten to the sum of twenty. The letter in this count is Hebrew Kaf, English K, associated with the magical image of an open hand, here substituted for the image of a fist as shown by the hieroglyphic of a pair of arms, each ending in a clenched fist. This letter and number pair is associated with the planetary symbol of Venus and with the Tarot Trump, the Queen. The P.O.D.'s depiction for this card is of Demuzi, called Tammuz in Persian, 
copulating with Inanna, called Ishtar by the Arabian Bedouins. The young man holds a chalice and a shepherd's crook and looks upward, sprawled back across an altar above which is hung a massive mask of Gilgamesh between the twin crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt, all below a single all-seeing eye. Twin fists in front of the altar hold in one hand a quiver of arrows and, in the other, an olive branch, signifying the weapons of war and the message of peace. The young woman, his consort, is sprawled across an eight-by-eight checkered floorboard, looking up toward a female altar across from that of the male mask and crowns over whose shoulder we see the image. The twelfth tarot trump, like the preceding eleventh before it, has a decade jump in its gematria value, this time stepping up to thirty. The letter associated with it is Hebrew Lamed, English L, and its magical image, or Egyptian hieroglyph, is that of an ox goad, or yoke, for harnessing cattle. The zodiac sign associated with this letter number pair is Libra, the scales, and the tarot card is usually labeled as justice or balance, although here I call it simply fair. In the POD depiction, we see standing atop three circular stairs, a four-winged, one pair red, the other purple, hermaphrodite, divided vertically up and down the center between a female right side holding up an anchor and a male left side holding aloft a torch, blindfolded and shouldering the yoke. The thirteenth tarot trump card corresponds to the Hebrew letter Mem, the English letter M, whose gematria value, in turn, is 40. The letter is associated with the magical image of water, as shown here in the Egyptian hieroglyph of a cup or urn, shown in cross-section, full of liquid. The element associated with this attribute is thus also water, alchemical mercury, and the image of the tarot trump card usually associated with these traits is that of the hanged man, here simply labeled hung. In the POD rendition of this imagery, we see Odin, hung upside down by one foot from Yggdrasil, the world tree of Norse myth, blindfolded and bleeding from a third eye on his forehead, dripping drops of blood into a pool of water below him amongst the roots of the tree. Behind him, and sweeping up toward him from the background, is the massive tsunami of the world flood, daunting and consuming all the other trees in the forest. The fourteenth tarot trump is associated with the Hebrew letter Nun, English N, whose gematria is fifty. The hieroglyph of Nun depicts a fish, and it is associated with the zodiac sign Scorpio, the scorpion, and with the tarot trump trait of death usually depicted as the Grim Reaper, 
mounted on a pale horse, as depicted in the corresponding verse of the Book of Revelation by St. John of Patmos. In the POD rendition of this imagery, we see a flying saucer-shaped UFO surveying a sea of dead people, presumably depicting the gods overseeing the aftermath of the Great Flood. This scene is particularly reminiscent of the line spoken by the goddess Aluru in the Epic of Gilgamesh during the Great Deluge that she had, quote, given birth to the human race, only to see them fill the ocean like fish. End quote. The 15th Tarot Trump card describes the Hebrew letter Samak, English S, which was associated with a prop or support as shown here by the Egyptian hieroglyphic of a whip or flail. Its gematria value is 60, and it is associated with the zodiac sign Sagittarius, the centaur archer. The traditional tarot trump assigned to this letter is called Temperance in the Rider weight deck, but I have chosen the Crowley-Harris-designated title for it here as Art. In the original depiction, an angel poured an elixir upward from one cup to another. In the POD depiction, three shamans sit around a puddle and, whisking their flails upward at it, summon a stone shaped like Apophis to rise up into thin air. In the night sky behind them is the hub of the Milky Way. The 16th Tarot Trump is the Devil card, affiliated to the Hebrew letter Ayin, English O, whose gematria value is 70, and whose hieroglyphic image is of an all-seeing eye, or so-called eye of providence. These traits are also tied to the zodiac sign Capricorn, the fish-goat constellation, and in the original design for the card's motif by Eliphas Levy, the devil was depicted as Baphomet, enthroned identically to the depiction in the later official Rider weight deck, only with a goat's head clearly on its shoulders. The depiction of this idea in the POD tarot trumps shows a massive pyramid with a missing capstone, in place of which is an immense eye in front of a still greater solar eclipse. In the foreground stands a guard across from a seated visitor, before a sphinx, with the horns of the Egyptian god Khnum, at the entrance to a vast maze surrounding the base of the pyramid. Overarching all is Nuit, the Egyptian goddess of night. The 17th tarot trump card is for the Hebrew letter Pe, English P, whose hieroglyphic symbol is a mouth. In the ordering of this deck, I have replaced the tower at this point with the magus, usually given associated with Hebrew letter Beth, the second letter in the alphabetic cipher. The Magus card is associated with the planetary sign Mercury and, 
in this case, with the gematria sum 80. The POD deck's depiction of this character is as a four-armed man seated in a cave between twin podiums wearing a mask alike the Mayan day name Ahau but with the Egyptian Horus forelock twin horns again alike those of Knum and a crown with twin serpents extending from the temples Behind him is a quetzal bird and a gyroscope, a pool of milky stalactite drippings, as well as his telltale candle burning at both ends. With one hand, he makes the sign of silence, pressing his index finger upright over his lips. And with another, he points outward at the viewer. With his third hand, he rolls five cubic dice. And with his fourth hand, he flips a coin. On the column opposite his dice roll is also a deck of cards. Before him, in the foreground, sit two acolytes, cross-legged, across from one another, over a board. The 18th tarot trump describes the Hebrew letter Tzadi, English Z, as a fish hook, shown by the hieroglyphic for a simple lure knot, associated with the zodiac sign Aquarius, the water bearer, and with the gematria sum, 90. In spite of Aleister Crowley's repeated admonitions throughout his works that Sadi is not the star, in this arrangement I have placed the letter as it was in the Rider Waite deck originally, as it relates to the tarot trump of the star. In the P.O.D.'s depiction of this trait, a pair of children, one male, one female, conspire with an adult female to pour poison into the ear of an adult male who has fallen asleep in a public fountain, causing him to drop his chalice of wine. The 19th tarot trump associates the Hebrew letter Kof, English Q, with the closest hieroglyphic, a head in profile, to its magical image, describing it as the back of the head. The gematria of this letter is 100, stepping into the centurial from a decade-based expansion rate and it is associated with the zodiac sign Pisces, the fishes. The tarot trump, the moon, is affiliated to it, and the depiction of this trait in the POD deck shows the tree of death hung with two fractured skulls, those of the so-called hero twins in Mayan mythology and a lion's tooth on a necklace. In its branches perch an owl and a raven, and around its trunk a golden serpent and a crimson serpent intertwine their coils. At its roots are a tortoise and a hare and a man lying down, looking up, and behind it all is an alignment of the planets and the core of the Milky Way galaxy. The 20th tarot trump card 
describes the Hebrew letter Resh, English R, the magical image of which is a head, depicted as the front thereof, and the Egyptian hieroglyph of a face. The letter's gematria value is 200, and it is associated with the planetary sign of the sun and with the tarot trump card of the sun as well. The depiction of the trait in the POD deck shows a simple heliocentric model for the local planetary orbits with the sun at the center surrounded by an orange circle for Mercury, a green circle for Venus, and a large circle divided into green, black, red, and yellow, depicting the orbit of Earth as the medicine wheel of Malkuth, and so on and so forth for the remaining planets, all encircled by the twelve houses of the ecliptic zodiac. The 21st Tarot Trump is for the Hebrew letter Shin, the phoneme Sh, whose image is the hieroglyph of a tooth. Shin is associated with the element fire, alchemical salt, and the gematria value 300. The affiliated Tarot Trump is called variously the Judgment or the Aeon card, depending on the deck, and is here labeled Era as demarcating a duration of time. In the POD deck's depiction of this trait, the asteroid Apophis is shown sneaking up toward Earth from behind the moon while in the foreground and background, the rest of the planets and the sun align with galactic core. The 22nd and final trump in the tarot deck describes the last Hebrew letter, Tao, our phoneme, Th, by relating it to a sign, and specifically, to a sign of the cross. The gematria of Tao is 400, and it is associated with the planetary sign of Jupiter. In the POD deck, this trait is associated with the Wheel of Fortune card, and labeled simply Luck. In the depiction, we see a Triskali logo written on paper affixed to a post by an arrow around the base of the post, of which are circling a green snake, a red boar, and a yellow hound. <laughs> 